A more comfortable day has spread across Tallahassee. Good evening. I'm student meteorologist Alex Cordero. And I'm student meteorologist Tyler Allender. Yeah, it was a nice day on this Wednesday, September 18th. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a surprise as you walked out the door, but we still had some rain. Yes, the, the dew point temperatures definitely were on the rise. And you know what else is on the rise? Tropical Storm Manuel still making an impact still. in Mexico. Still yes. at this hour. After what, making landfall several days ago and providing so much rain to the Mexican mainland as well as because of, what was that, Ingrid? Ingrid, yes, Hurricane Ingrid on the other side of the country. And now the death toll has risen to 57. That's just very unfortunate. And now there's a new tropical disturbance that we're watching which could cause even more moisture in that region and even along the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. Yes, Invest 95L is what it's called and it has an 80% chance of development and it looks like it's going to be bringing in, if not direct, at least some indirect impacts to that same part of the country. And it's moving oh so slow once again. Mm -hmm. So yes. more rain, not good news mm -hmm. for that rain area, well, rainy area. Also some bad news, Acapulco and Mexico City are still disconnected due to mudslides impacting the roads so families cannot get back to their homes and they mu likely won't be able to if this tropical disturbance gets in the way, so. Definitely a scary situation. I don't know what I'd do if I see all that water. It's mm -hmm. Yes, but for a brighter look at home, it's not looking so bad. You could see a lot of rain impacting the southern part of the peninsula, but for Tallahassee, we're still in the main dry. We had a little bit of rain showers, as Tyler had mentioned earlier today. And if you look towards Texas, you can see a lot of rain impacting from the, in from the remnants of Hurricane Ingrid. Now we go up to the northwest, and what do we see? This giant low pressure system with this associated front, and this is going to be the next main weather maker for our neck of the woods. I'm gonna get, we're going to get to that later on in the show. What for the, our neck of the woods? A little cloudy, a little sprinkles here and there. Since, but since then, moving off toward the west, nice and comfortable conditions are persisting, even though those dew points are relatively high. What are the main headlines for today? As we said before, tropics are brewing with yet another storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Cooler temps tonight and a very heavy p rain potential this weekend with that associated front that looks like it's going to be impacting our area. Tonight's forecast calling for 67 degrees with a 20% chance of rain. It's going to be more comfortable, less smuggy with cooler conditions, and I'm sure that's a welcome sight for all of us in Tallahassee and for the I-10 corridor. Don't you expect that? Yes, you're getting your exercise. Yes, I'm <laughs> definitely getting my exercise for sure. It's been a while. But um, what else has been going on around the world? Well, Mount Cinnabon, not to be confused with Cinnabon, yes. but in all seriousness, it has erupted uh, once again for, the, what, the second time this week? Yes, the second time this week. This mountain is located in Indonesia, a famous place for volcanoes. How many volcanoes do they have on like the mainland? 129 or something. 129. This is probably because they sit right on the Pacific Rim, so they get volcanic activity all the time. Smoke going up, what, two miles in the air? Yes, two miles in the air. Thank goodness no one was hurt, but evacuations have been ordered since the first eruption, and I doubt that those evacuations have ceased since the second eruption. And keeping on the theme of two, this has caused an evacuation of about two miles. Two miles. So on the mountain. So definitely a far-reaching event. We got the flooding that we just talked about in Mexico, and we got this evacuations from the volcano in Indonesia. Yes, wild weather throughout the planet, but for some calmer weather, let's take it to our first local. Thanks, Alex and Tyler. Well, today, currently, we're seeing temperatures at 88 degrees, which is staying right on trend with our average at 88. Our low tonight is going to be 73, or has, was 73 this morning, which is just a little bit higher than our average at 68. Current conditions, right now, we see temperatures at 79. We don't really have heavy rains in the area, but we are going to see a couple of pop-up showers through the course of the evening, as we have some showers um, coming from our east side. Um, humidity is at 77, and right now our dew point is sitting at 71. Current temperatures, as I said, 79 in Tallahassee, and across the board you're going to see temperatures in the lower 80s. Right now on our local radar, as I was saying, we have those sh pop-up showers that are coming in from the east. They're just kind of taking a little um, traveling course to the west. Um, there are just going to be a couple of showers here in the Tallahassee area, but mainly just kind of popping up here and there and not really making any kind of huge impact as our graphic has showed earlier. Now right now, our future cache is showing that we had that cold front just kind of push through Florida earlier today. And we're going to see that's where we have all those um, pop-up showers coming from. And right now, we're going to have more sunshine push through our area over the course of the day. So tomorrow, you're going to see less rain, more sunshine, probably less clouds as well. 
over the course of the time of going into Saturday, we're going to see an increase in moisture. We're going to have another cold front come through, and by Saturday or Sunday, you're going to be seeing more rain into our area. So right after that football game, make sure that you kind of just stay indoors, bring out that umbrella if you do go outside and drive carefully out on those roads. Now for Let's see what we got going on for tonight's forecast. We got 67 degrees. It's going to be less muggy, cooler in the area. So if you have any outdoor activities, it's going to be a lot more comfortable going outside. Um, for tomorrow, our temperatures are going to be staying consistent with today. We have temperatures at 88 degrees, just a slight breeze, sunny skies, and that's all due to that cold front that pushed through. That um, rain is going to be opening. The skies are going to be opening up and we're going to see a lot more sunshine, more comfortable temperatures sitting at 88 degrees in the upper 80s. Now for our seven day forecast, let's take a look at this of what we've got going on. We're going to be seeing temperatures at 88 degrees on Thursday and just a slight warm up on Friday at about 89. Saturday and Sunday, our temperatures are going to decrease because we have that potential cold front coming in. It's going to be bringing more rain on Sunday. It, we have an increase at 70%. And then Monday, as we go through, temperatures will just kind of like stay at the, eight, the 80 degrees. Thank you, Tracy. And across the southeast, we saw very nice conditions, a little bit cooler than where we have been for the most part. 81 right now, though, in Tallahassee, we did not reach 90 degrees, which is a nice relief after it's been so hot lately. 81 in Orlando and a rain-cooled 84 in Miami and across the southeast, similar conditions. 81 for you folks in Little Rock, but man, it's scorching over in Shreveport, 96 degrees, so the heat is on the buildup over there. But over here, we do got a slight a bit of showers moving through the area, especially over towards the Suwannee River Valley and near our southern suburbs. That's just basically off the Atlantic Coast sea breeze. More showers as you head your way further down the peninsula of Florida towards Tampa and Orlando. Little pop-up showers along your I-75 commute between Tampa and Ocala. So keep it safe on the roadways. It's a little wet across the state, as you can see in this radar map. And we're going to give you a tour of the south. There's those pop-up showers once again across Florida and also along the Gulf Coast towards New Orleans. Light sprinkles over there. Dry, though, across Georgia and Alabama and the Carolinas. It's going to be nice these next coming days as we do have a cold front move through last night and into today. That's why it did feel a little bit nicer today. And it's going to, guess what? It's going to feel even nicer tomorrow here across the Big Bend and across most of the southeast. So there's that rain that's going to be associated with South Florida. That's going to move out of the picture. We're going to see sunshine building, less clouds, and drier air, which is going to feel nice. So cooler temperatures in the morning. And you can see this approaching front up here to our northwest. That's going to be moving to the southeast and bring us moisture around Saturday night and mostly into Sunday. So as far as the game's concerned, it's looking good, but... Your Sunday might be a washout. We're predicting a 70% chance of rain, and this is probably just going to go up as we get near into the weekend, and we'll keep our eyes on it for you. Maybe you pick up a one to two inches. We'll keep our eyes on it. But as far as the boating is concerned, for your Thursday, it's going to be a great day to get out on the water. East winds at 10 knots, one to two foot seas, light chop, partly cloudy skies, very little rain to talk about. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow, drier, slight breeze. It's going to look beautiful. So get out on the water, enjoy your outdoors, maybe do an early morning run because lows tonight, they're going to be quite chilly, at least for what we've been seeing. 61 for you folks in Atlanta, 64 in Montgomery, 69 here in the capital of Florida, 65 in Savannah, and then warmer as we head to our west, 73 in Shreveport and 77 in New Orleans. Now across the rest of the southeast tomorrow, we're going to barely uh, – be just south of 90 degrees, 89 here in Tallahassee, 83, nice for you in Atlanta, but again, once again, warm over in Shreveport and Little Rock. But guys, Tyler and Alex, bring us back to our local stories. All righty, local indeed. What do we have going on around um, nighttime today? We have a cool event going on, Yeah, right? of course, we normally see the moon when you look up in the sky, but mm -hmm. it'll be a little extra special. This is the full moon for this month, and when it falls close to the uh, fall equinox, it's called the harvest moon. Ah, the harvest moon. I've heard about st th this moon. It tends to be a really big moon, just like the super moon, right? Yeah, and well, actually, too, it was important. It gets its name from agriculture, mm -hmm. and especially back when farmers really depended on the moonlight 
to get some of their work done after sunset. Ah, I see. When it's really close, you can it still shows the light once the sun sets, giving them, I guess, that extra time to prepare for the night before everything goes on bad. And what time are we going to see this moon? Well, it rises at 7.03, so just a short time, but it officially is full uh, in the morning, just after 7 o'clock. So right. look up to the sky and look at that big, bright, full moon. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what's going on nationally. Troy, you're going to see... Well, I'll be too busy studying for my classes, so I won't, won't begin to see that moon, but hopefully another time. But in the meantime, as we look ahead at your temperatures across the nation, not looking too shabby. Of course, very warm and mild across much of the Midwest and the Southeast. 85 is your temperature in New Orleans, and look at that. Ooh, we're approaching triple-digit heat, 97 in Dallas. But if you want to taste the fall, folks, go to the Northeast because they're really seeing cold temperatures in the 70s, 71 in the nation's capital, 72 degrees in Detroit. So those temperatures are just very, very cool for this time of year, but not, not too bad if I do so I save myself. But as we look ahead at your water vapor energy, you can see that most of the East Coast is seeing very dry, dry conditions. But we do have a little play around the Northwest. And as we zoom in for your radar, what's going on right there, we do have a little pressure system that's bringing the showers. And yes, even snow, especially at the higher elevations on Montana, they're currently under winter weather advisories, so, and especially for the higher up you go, the more better chances you have at skin snow. So you guys could see a little bit, two to four inches, so very good news for your ski levels. Of course, now, even though it's a little bit too early for that, you know, who doesn't love skiing or any other winter weather activities at that, but zooming around towards Colorado, and of course, that's where um, folks there have been, unfortunately, bearing a lot of flood, and, and as you probably heard in the news, and, we're, and I just wish we could have more good news, but as you can see right now, we still have more showers and going on the regions, but so hopefully folks here soon are just having a good um, trying to deal with it very well. But moving on towards the Midwest in the Northeast, again, not looking too bad with the exception of a few pop-up showers at that, but if you are looking to, you know, just have a good getaway, especially night, go to the Finger Lakes, particularly around Watkins Glen. Of course, they have the wineries there, so if you want to, you know, eat dinner with your significant other, other, I mean, go ahead and do it because, you know, with weather like this, you're not going to get another chance like this anytime soon. But in the southeast, you know, a little bit of showers on the I-10 quarter, so just take it easy with your traveling. But other than that, very clear across the na nation, with the exception of showers across for central and southern Florida. Airport delays, again, not looking too shabby at that, so good airport traveling. And tonight's forecast, very cool across the east coast, 70s and 60s. And finally, as you look at towards tomorrow's forecast, look at that. More warmth and mildness in store, 80s and 90s across the East Coast. Nicole, so it was very comfortable across uh, the region today. Did you enjoy that cool weatherness? this oh, morning? Oh, I loved that cool weather. It was nice and crisp this morning when I stepped out, went to the gym. So it felt great. I'm excited for more. We reached highs today of 88 and that 73. Like you said, Troy, it felt awesome awesome out today. Nothing like those lows of 56 back in 2001, so thank goodness for that. I'm not quite ready for the northeast fall, but this feels really nice our mornings. Currently it's 81 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. We saw a little bit of showers run through the area earlier, but we have cleared up since then. That dew point sitting at 72 degrees and that humidity is at 74 percent, so it is getting a little bit muggy. Current temperatures 81 in Tallahassee right now, 82 in Quincy, 86 in Bainbridge. We are much cooler across Across the board for this evening. Satellite and radar shows that those clouds have mo are moving through. We have a few showers moving into Jacksonville, but other than that, we just have a little bit of cloud cover over us in Tallahassee in the Big Bend region, so we're looking great. Uh, just to, just another peek at it, but our, our water vapor shows that we do have those drier conditions pooling on down, so those clouds will be clearing out and we'll have a gorgeous next couple of days. But those clouds and the showers will be moving in the, for the rest of the weekend. Now here's that cold front that was sitting over us just yesterday, so this one was a quick one. It has moved down into South Florida, so that's why they're getting a lot of showers. And that sunshine is moving on in, so it's building and we're going to have beautiful weather. But another cold front is on the way, so that moisture will be increasing for Saturday's game. 
Look for the cloud cover to increase so it will be cooler, it won't be as hot, so it won't feel as bad out, and it will make it great that it's a night game, but those rains will be coming and we do have a potential for some flooding this weekend. So make sure you are wary of that on Sunday as you head out for your, your activities throughout the day. Tonight's forecast, 67 degrees, going to be beautiful, so if you have some running around to do outside, make sure you get out there. Less muggy and cooler with only a 20% chance of, of uh, rain, so it will be a perfect night. Tomorrow's forecast, 88, we're finally out of the 90s, thank goodness. We'll have a slight breeze and sunny sky, so it is going to be beautiful. Taking a look at that seven-day forecast, look at that, nothing in the 90s, 80s across the board, and Sunday's going to be a wet one with 70% chance of rain. But look for look at those lows all in the 60s and 70s. Let us head over to Tracy and Chris around so they can take us on the desk and talk about some exciting weather history. What's going on, guys? Thank you, Nicole. And yeah, I mean, weather history today, there are some big things that happened. We Absolutely. saw the um, 1926 hurricane in Miami. It's actually called the Great Miami Hurricane. You want to give us some info on that? Absolutely. Well, back in 1926, we, the hurricane, <laughs> Miami hurricane, <laughs> This was right before they um, even had a system to name it a Category 1, Category 2, and so on. Yeah. So it produced winds at about 138 miles per hour. So in today's scale, that would be about a Category 4. Correct. So quite impressive. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we saw ocean waters that drowned um, a total of 135 people. That's so, quite devastating. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And then the total in deaths um, ended up being... 372. And that was back in the day when structures weren't as sturdy like they are now. So right, they didn't we won't have as see. many warnings to True. let people know when it was coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of also, in 1989, not too long ago, we saw Hurricane Hugo hit Puerto Rico. That's right. Yeah. Um, at that point, it would have been a Category Two, and wind gusts were up to 92 miles per hour. Yeah, and uh, a lot of uh, wind and rain, and of course a storm surge at four to six feet. So quite impressive stuff. We haven't seen much hurricanes this year. But, uh, Jason, any hurricanes nearing our neck of the woods? Hey, Chris, not just yet. We may be looking at one the next week or so, potentially in the Gulf. I will, we don't have to worry about that just yet. Models aren't indicating anything. Good weather facts, by the way. I'll give you another fact. In Florida today, it was quite moist, especially in South Florida, and a little hot. Of course, a little bit milder as that cold front did pass in the northern portions of Florida. So it wasn't as hot into the 90s. And dew points wise, well, they're beginning to come down, at least for Tallahassee and Big Bend region areas. 72 degree dew point in Tallahassee, 68 degree dew point in Jacksonville. Winds are beginning to turn a little northerly, so we're getting some dry air into the region. Now, dew points, though, feeling a little bit unpleasant, certainly in South Florida. 74 degree dew point in West Palm Beach, a lot of moisture present into the portions of South Florida. And of course, why? We have those winds coming from the Atlantic on the eastern coast of Florida, certainly giving a lot of moisture into their regions, and especially into the wet and western portions of Florida. We're seeing that sea breeze front begin to pass by. And also, we do that water vapor imagery. That gives us a good indication of where that boundary layer is, which is right along the South Florida portion. See all that green bubble? That means a lot of moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So certainly some showers going on into that region. But for Tallahassee-wise, we're looking at some dry air beginning to come through, and hence a little nicer conditions, not feeling so moist outside and a little nice to go out. So satellite radar indicating the certainly a certain thing. Most of the region, especially in the Jacksonville, seeing a nice, nice dry spot. We do have some sea breeze showers coming in from the east, moving towards the west. Tallahassee, I don't think we're going to see that later tonight. But really, showers are certainly centered more into portions of South Florida, into Fort Myers. Certainly seeing a lot of showers begin to persist throughout the area. Miami, West Palm Beach, we had a couple showers here today. But mostly, especially for our neck of the woods, not seeing too much. Satellite radar indicating really the same thing. We had north. We had showers just to the north and south of us from that sea breeze front, isolated, however, and not really much of a factor. Zooming into the central portions and southern portions of Florida, we had a lot of rain showers. Of course, we had winds coming on shore, and they had that boundary, so it gave a lot of instability. We get all these showers, especially until later afternoon hours, and quite strong showers, especially into the western portions of Florida, extending all the way out into Fort Myers and Cape, and, uh, Cape Canaveral. So, I've seen a lot, a lot of sh showers into South Florida, but really, for us though, of course, looking quite now. And one more look at the satellite radar, all the showers remaining down south into the southern portion. So watches and warnings, we have one into Manatee County, lasting until Thursday, 2 a.m. into the morning. Uh, that's from the Withlacoochee River in those portions of Tampa. We'll be seeing some little...
coastal flooding. However, not too much to worry about. Beach and boating, looking great though. Go out to beach, go out to beach tomorrow. Winds out of the east at 10 knots, surf for one, two feet. Guys, looking great for the boating, especially in the morning hours when it's supposed to be a little cooler. Probably cloudy skies to a light shot. Tonight's forecast, mild into the 70s for southern portions of that 69 degrees in Tallahassee. A nice night into tomorrow. Thunderstorms persisting for southern Florida with temperatures hanging around into the 90s. John, though, we're going to go ahead and take a broader look around the tropics. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, it was a dry here, day here in Tallahassee, but where it's getting a lot more moist is down in the tropics, unfortunately. That's really going to assist the next name on the list here. We've gotten through Ingrid last week. Jerry is the next name on the list, and I believe we'll get that this week. And I'll show you where we'll get that in just a couple of minutes. Right now across the tropics, there's a front stripped from south, southern Florida all the way up into the polar areas. And that's actually going to keep one of the other systems that we'll be talking about out of our hair. This little system right here, that's the remnants or about to be remnants of Umberto. And that is slowly pushing on towards the north and it's actually going to pick up speed over the next couple of days. And here's that look at the track here. Umberto has winds of 40 miles an hour right now and it's pushing off towards the polar regions and is actually going to be a little bit more of a player in places like Ireland and Iceland and parts of the UK over the next week or so. It's going to gain a little bit of intensity, but it's no, no impact to here in the United States. What will be an impact is this player over here on this side of the Caribbean. We're looking at a small cyclone starting to wrap up in the western parts of the Caribbean. The rest of the Caribbean so far right now is pretty quiet and it's been that way pretty much all season long. But what has been active is the Bay of Campeche and into the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to zoom into that right now. Here's that little system just coming off the Yucatan Peninsula here and starting to wrap up. What the models are suggesting over the next couple of days is we're going to get a tropical cyclone, probably with the name Jerry, in the Bay of Campeche down here and it's going to get stuck. There's, remember that front we've been talking about all show long? That's going to keep this system down in the Bay of Campeche and down in the Gulf of Mexico and then it might let it out over the next week or so. But what it's going to do is it's going to bring in a lot of rain and it's going to get so close to the Mexican coast on the western side of the Bay of Campeche that it's going to bring even more rain to places where they've already seen TD8, Fernand, and Ingrid over the last couple of weeks. Somewhere, some places between Brownsville and down into Tampico could see upwards of five more inches over the next week or so and that's all going to be spreading off towards the north and east up towards the Gulf of Mexico and here's a look at that. This is the American model this, that we get here in the studio. This is going to start spewing moisture all the way up into the northern gulf. And we're also going to have to watch this front. This is the front that comes in. This is out 72 hours. So through the early parts of the weekend, going to bring in rain from New Orleans to Montgomery and points northward. Could also bring in two to upwards of five inches of rain across the Big Bend area. We'll keep track of that here at 4FSU. And we'll also keep track of all local weather over the next couple of days. Send it back now to the desk. Thank you, John. And uh, we're going to continue talking about hurricanes since this is the topic of the day, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, back in, um, well, 10 years ago from today, we had Hurricane Isabel. Yeah, and what an impressive storm, you know. It, it, it made landfall in North Carolina and then moved up the eastern seaboard. Right. And caused a lot of damage. We're talking about millions lost power. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It produced 234 mile per hour winds. So it quite impressive. You can imagine those are like wind speeds that you see on like the top of Mount Washington. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it pretty incredible stuff there. And Western Virginia saw over 20 inches of rain. That's pretty impressive for That's incredible. the colonial area. You I mean, know I, I hope mean? they had canoes in that oh, area. Oh, yeah. You got to. At least to, to like get, get through on the street. There. Especially with all the mudslides and the hilly terrain and stuff. So, right. But actually, our own local student meteorologist, Nicole, was living in Pennsylvania at the time. She had a huge tree in her backyard completely topple over. So quite impressive that is stuff. Incredible. With over $500 million worth of damage, we hopefully won't see a storm like that in the near future. No, nope, definitely not in our yeah. area. But Tyler, it's looking good in our weather, so <laughs> bring us around to the local forecast. Yeah, thanks guys. Looking pretty good. We do have one fly in the ointment though, and that's some shower activity moving in from east to west. And it's just enough to kind of cool things off a little bit further. High temperatures today were in the upper 80s, and that's really the coolest 
temperature we've seen in the afternoon all month long. In fact, August 25th was the last time we saw a high temperature of 88 degrees or cooler. So again, a nice little shower moving through from time to time, but not a big deal. You can see the temperature swing that we've seen over the last 24 hours. Yesterday, we were cooking 93, 94 degrees. Of course, temperatures dropped off as they do overnight, and then we only rose into the mid to upper 80s this afternoon, so it was definitely a refreshing change. High temperature was 88 degrees officially, 73 was the morning low, so pretty much right on cue, especially for the afternoon high, even though it seems like it's cooler than average. We're really just bumping it down to seasonable normals. 81 degrees right now at dinner hour, mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of added moisture because of the rain we've seen as of late with that nice easterly breeze coming in at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So temperatures elsewhere are in the 80s, no 90s on the map. Again, the first time in weeks that we've seen this, even really months probably, 82 in Thomasville, 84 in St. Mark's, 85 in Apalachicola. And again, the moisture a little high at the surface because of the recent shower activity that's moving through, but overall it's going to be pretty comfortable the next couple of days and I think we'll see less shower activity the next couple of days around our area. Most of the rain by far is in our peninsula areas. Lots of rain continues. They've had rain there for days. Now I want to show you what's going on in the tropics as we've been talking about this disturbance down here in the Yucatan Peninsula and the Bay of Campeche is kind of just sitting there and it's trying to organize into a tropical system no matter what it does it's going to slowly develop it looks like and just push a lot of moisture up toward florida meanwhile we have a frontal system in the in the northern midsection of the country and that's scooting southward and that's going to also enhance our rain chances this weekend and into early next week so for the next couple of days though enjoy the sunshine enjoy the refreshing somewhat cool temperatures because by the weekend, hopefully after the game, the moisture will be on the up and up. Tonight, temperatures in the upper 60s, less muggy. Tomorrow, we're going to see high temperatures once again below 90 degrees with those mostly sunny skies and a nice little breeze at times. If you're taking the boat out on Thursday, easterly winds 10 knots, seas about 1 to 2 feet. And here's your seven day forecast. Notice how we keep the rain chances at bay at least through Saturday or so, then late Saturday into Sunday, up the rain chances go, temperatures respond accordingly, and then hopefully drying out early next week. Let's go back to Chris and Tracy to wrap up the show. Thank you, Tyler, and in a more serious note today, we saw a tornado on vacation. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Tell us where he went. It was actually in the Bahamas, if you would believe that. It actually hit the International Airport, Lyndon Penley International Airport, and damaged a lot of planes. So That's in Nassau, right? Yeah, Nassau, Bahamas. So That's pretty incredible. Impressive stuff. I mean, I would like to go to Nassau, Bahamas, but, but not when there's a tornado. Not when there's a yeah. tornado there. So you get severe weather. There were no loss of lives, so it was a good that's good Just news. Just lots of airplanes at the airport. Yes. So Hopefully no travel delays, but if you are happen to be in the Bahamas, it's going to be clearing out as that front will move through. Maybe bring some showers into your next day or two, but maybe drier by the weekend. But as far as our local weather is concerned, you know, we got beautiful weather on tap. Beautiful day for your Thursday and Friday to end the week. 86 degrees, or 88 degrees is our high tomorrow with cooler. Look at that, 67 in the morning. I'm really excited I'm about excited. that. I'm excited. I'll be outside running. I'm hoping to wake up a little bit earlier and enjoy some of those cooler oh, temperatures. Oh, yeah. But we do got rain on our way by Sunday. So if you happen to follow us, like us on Facebook slash at facebook.com slash FSU weather. Follow us on twitter.com slash FSU weather. Or watch us anytime at livestream.com slash FSU weather. Sounds perfect. Yes. So as far as your night's concerned, enjoy your night. Enjoy that cooler weather. And we'll catch us again.